Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to go ahead and, and build up the lower end on the uh, AT2. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the transmission in, the uh, crankshaft, get it all buttoned up. And then we'll probably do uh, another video for the rest of that lower end stuff. And then of course we'll have to get to the, uh, uh, the top end. So let's get to it. Okay, we get the bearings put in. And one thing I noticed on this uh, set of cases, if you'll see right in here, looks like we had some uh, crankshaft drag and it's on both sides. This one's got it too, right in here. So I assume at some point this one had uh, some bearing problems. That's the only the only thing I can, I can think of, uh, but I just wanted to point out that we do, we did have some drag in the cases there. So the crankshaft was, uh, uh, it just wasn't centered. As soon as we get them in, get it in, I'm going to stick the crankshaft in and just make sure that it's within it's setting there, nothing is touching, and then we'll, uh, we'll check it again when we put it together to make sure nothing's rubbing on there. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead. I've got this one in, I've got my little one in, and I'm just heating this, these bosses up with a uh, heat gun. Usually you can get by with that and uh, just uh, tap it in a little bit if you need to. There we go. So that, this case is loaded. So I've got to get ready to do the other side, see how hot that is. And when you're doing this, if you need to beat on them at all, make sure you back it up. I've, you can see here, I've got my, my blocks where I can keep everything level and back up the, the bearing as it goes in. Otherwise you can break the case. And when you're putting these bearings in, uh, do go ahead and make sure that your hole is clear all the way through for your oiling into the bearing. These both are. I've just got it setting in here and I don't see any issues at all. So I think we're good to go. It should be, you know, with it setting down like this, it should be pretty well centered as far as what's sticking out and it shouldn't be like dripping or I mean drooping or one, one way or the other or whatever. So I think we're good. Okay, once we've got our bearings in, they're seated, then we go ahead and measure this. And now there's not gonna be any measurements in the book, none that you'll be able to find. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a common sense approach here to make sure that that crank is gonna have clearance, but not too much. And it's not gonna tell you in the book how much clearance it needs either. It, what you don't want is you don't want the screws that you put in to uh, to pull the cases together to be to pull it uh, uh, to have the the crankshaft pushing against it as you put it in. So 
you want a little clearance because when you tighten up the gear on this side, it's going to pull this whole crank all the way to the right, all the way to the clutch side. All we're looking for is that you're not squeezing the crankshaft in there and, uh, you know, putting all that undue stress on the cases. And you could, if you had too much, you could have a leak here from your uh, sealant, which would cause uh, air leak for the crankcase and oil leak for everything else. So it's, it's just, it's pretty important. Uh, I would say that in 99% of the time, if you get your dimension right here, you know, where you, uh, the 50, 56 millimeter or whatever it is. Yeah. If you're, if you've got that within your tolerance, it's going to fit in there. But what comes into play are these shims. Just to say these are right, it's not really a good idea. So what I do is I just take a parallel and I measure this before I even start. I want to make sure that I've got uh, this, in this case, this is a half inch parallel and it is a half inch. It, me it measures that way. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a depth gate or a depth mic and I'm going to go down through the hole here, hold this down. Let me see if I can get you down a little bit further. You can see here, I think, that what I'm measuring is the race here. Right there. That's why you need to make sure you, your bearings are seated. And we're just going to hold this right here. And then run that down and take our measurement. Right there. Probably not going to be able to read it. But we've got a 2.264. Okay, I think I might have cut you off there, but we had... Uh, 1.639 and on the other side we got 1 1.625 and it's the same thing we're just gonna just put our parallel across here and measure down to the inside race same thing okay so what I've got is on the clutch side I've got 1.639 and I'm just rounding these off. We're within a thousandths, okay? Uh, 1.625 on the mag side. We subtract our two half inches, which makes one inch, of course, and we're down to 2.264. Then we measure the crank and before when we measured that, we measured it in millimeters, and of course now we need to be in inches, so the because I my measuring equipment is in inches. Okay, so two point two oh five. So we subtract the 2.205 and we have uh, 59 thousandths. Then I take the two shims and we have to measure those. And I've got one at 26 and the other one at 20. So we subtract that from our 59 thousandths, the uh, 26 leaves us 33 thousandths, uh, subtract the 20 thousandths, leaves us with 13 thousandths. So we've got 13 thousandths clearance so that this crankshaft is not going to be 
impeded by this case being tightened up against it. It's going to be loose. You've got 13 thousandths clearance. And when you tighten up the, the, the crank gear on this side, it's going to pull the crank all the way to this side. So what you're going to end up with is 13 thousandths clearance between this bearing and this side of the crank with the shim on. So we should be good. Shouldn't have any, any undue stress on the cases or the crankshaft. And it's, like I say, you're not gonna find these measurements anywhere. You're just making sure that these are not squeezing the crankshaft. So that this will seal and the crankshaft will be free to do its job. And get your seals in just to, what I do is I just clean all the sealing, where the seal goes, the seal boss, with acetone. And then I will lightly seal or clean the outside of the seal with acetone. And then I like to put a little bit of black RTV, just a little. You don't want to push a bunch of crap back into your bearing. This will help keep them in and it will also uh, keep them from leaking around the outside edge. Because a lot of these, they just push in pretty much. So that's, they're not in there real tight. So this gives it a little advantage. Just like that. And give it a little time before you try to um, put everything together to let that set up. And once you're done, just clean up whatever residual, just like you normally would. So this side's ready. And the owner also indicated he wanted the retainers. And I've got some of those in stock. I try to keep them because uh, I use them on my own bikes. So uh, I would recommend that you do use them. Uh, I get mine off of eBay. Usually you can find them on there. Uh, it's, uh, it's just some safe, you know, safety, it's uh, insurance kind of to put them on. Usually they're about, I don't know, maybe seven, eight, nine dollars each. You got one for this side and one for this side. So I believe it just bolts right here, I think, on this side. Okay. Okay, the seal retainers, this one here is gonna, it's gonna bolt right in here like this. And this is the one for the other side. And it's just gonna, you're just gonna bolt it in to how it'll fit. Let me see here. I think it goes like that. But it just sets over that seal and pulls down into the case there with the screw. And you've got this little slot right here right here and right here on the back. So all those, it pretty much fits in one way. But those will keep them in and uh, eliminate that issue sometimes. The, uh, the clutch side is 304-15128-00. And the mag side is 304-15118-00. On this side here, you'll just have to come up with a screw. I'll have to look in the book and see what it tells you, the length and everything of that screw. So let me see if I can find that. Okay, here's the, the service bulletin for them. And this one, it says use an eight 
by 10 millimeter bolt or screw with a lock washer. And I always put Loctite on too. These are secured with the existing screws, so not a problem. Okay, so we've got our eight millimeter bolt and we're putting some blue Loctite on it. Okay, there we go. And you can certainly put that on without uh, taking your engine apart, just the clutch side. Okay, As I'm gonna go ahead and put our retainer on and our spring hold down. And with that, little blue Loctite Your pizza cutter spring is going to go right here, so that's where it needs to be. Okay, let's get our crankshaft in. So we'll get a little oil on our seal here. I'm just using some Yamalube. And we'll get a little assembly lube in the, in the bearing. That's my preference. You don't have to, oil's fine. And we need to make sure that we've got our shim on the crankshaft. So we'll put a little grease up here. Just so it stays put. And I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of, of Yamalube on the snout there. Okay, I'm going to set the puller up. So let's see here. This is, they don't have a setup for this thing. <clears throat> so let's see here. We'll set this in there like that. So get our, this is a piece I made, this bolt, because it's a, it's a strange size. It's seven millimeter one as far as your threads go. So it's got to be made. Seven millimeters, not a very popular uh, bolt for motorcycles, but it does seem to be used quite a bit in the automotive industry. So uh, it's 
you, it's readily available as far as a um, tap and die goes. Okay, we're all set up there, I think. I think I need to get my blocks out of the way. They're just compounding the problem. All right, let me get wrench there for that. Okay, shim still in there. It's not pulling hard, but it's just hard enough you can't do, push it in there by hand. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, and all these pullers and stuff, you just got to, you got to make a lot of your own adapters. Stuff's just not, especially for the older machines like this, stuff's just not out there. So you've got to, you got to make it work. And I don't know, this, this looks like the setup I would use on a, on a CT1 maybe, but I just used that and then made my own bolt. And I just, uh, I think I used some 5 16 material, cut it down, threaded it to 7 millimeter uh, 1.0 thread, and welded a nut on top of it. So that's my setup on that one. Looks like we're in all the way. And the seal looks to be the way it should look. Okay, again, a little bit of grease. It'd probably stay put, but you never know. And that's the, this side. Okay, so that looks good, and it looks good down inside too. I don't see where anything is uh, rubbing or maybe rubbing. Okay, so that's all good. All right, let's uh, get some stuff together here. We've got our little trunnions that go on the shift forks. And we'll grease those up to hold those on. Hmm. Guess I just had it on. Crooked. Okay. So we've got that. And we need to... This, this uh, is the counter shaft, so it's going to go through here. And this one is going to go in here. And then our, trunnion, or our uh, shift drum is going to go in here. And right here is your neutral. And you have the uh, um, detent coming in right here. So that needs to point right there. That's how that's going to go. Now there's no shims on this transmission. Now some transmissions for these do have shims in them. I'm talking about loose shims. Uh, this one is going to go through there. It's got a uh, kind of a shim built onto it. So we don't need one there. This is not a loose shim. This is captive with this uh, e or, uh, uh, snap ring. And there are none on here. So I, I made a note of that when I took it apart. Now some transmissions do have shims. Uh, I've seen up to three different types that fit these bikes 
and they're all just a little bit different so you have to pay attention to them. Next thing we need to do is get in here and get us some lubricant in our our bearing. This is the needle bearing. Just kind of have to work it in that one. And to note, make a note on these is that you uh, you need to have this bearing seated far enough that oil can get through this hole. Otherwise it, it needs to be actually seated down far enough. Uh, it can't be flush with the top. Okay, get some uh, assembly lube on this bearing. And then we just have to try to get it together so that we can put it all in there at the same time. Now you don't need to worry about greasing this up. You can do it when you get it in there. Okay, I'm going to orient that approximately to my neutral. Okay, I think we're, we're close here. Okay, that fork's in. This fork is kind of lined up. I just want to take a peek here. Okay, there our detent is in the window. Okay, it looks like it's pretty close there. Uh, I'm going to put a little grease on the spring. For the detent and it goes up into there and then a little grease on the end here to hold the ball and I think I'll put a little over the top of it too the thing wants to fall off I'm sure I've got my detent on the drum positioned properly I'm not going to tighten this I'm just going to get it in there so I can keep it in neutral Okay, that's it. You can feel it. Now you can see, I believe, I didn't, I just put the fork in there. I didn't install it. It's easier for me anyway to do it this way. <coughs> Oops. So all I've got to do <laughs> is keep this light in the right place. Let me see what I can do. Okay, if you've got this one, you can usually just pull up. See the trunnion's still on it there? Pull up, line up, and get it into the drum. As long as you have it into the gear when you put it in there. And then you can take the pin once you've got it located in the drum and go ahead and get it in. So now everything's in there like it's supposed to be. Let 
You can see our gear set is uh, flush here, or reasonably so. So everything is seated the way it should be. Okay guys, looks like everything's in place. So we'll just go back through some acetone and clean up our surfaces again. I'm not going to interject a lot of oil, but some into the shift fork area. And the shafts. And you really don't want any on these here because they'll cause a suction and you won't be able to get the case together. Now, <clears throat> what I what I do is I I get these little syringes at the farm store so I can get it open. And they're real cheap, you know, not even a dollar for one. <clears throat> and I I use uh, 1211 uh, and just go ahead and oh, I guess that's the gasket out of that thing I just put some of the uh, three bond in it you don't need you don't need a full one And just pick your spot and start. And it's, you don't need it very thick. Okay, once you get that on, make sure you get your your dowels in. And I, I always clean these, take them out and clean them because they're usually rusty. Okay, we've got our shim on here on the crankshaft. Everything else is should be good to go. Got our bearings in. Just going to give my bearings in this one. A little shot of oil. Okay, so I've already gone back over and cleaned all this, so we should be ready to put it together. Okay, she's all down. So uh, let me get some screws and we'll see if we can get it together. Okay, I've got all my screws in except for these. 
So we'll get that on and it's just going to fit there. Make sure it, it straddles all these webbings in here. And once you get all those in, and once you get all those tight, then just go around, and take off your excess three bond, Yama bond, whatever you're using. Okay, we've got our drum here that had a shim. And then we need our keeper. So all that's good. I've got, uh, th remember this one was broke and one of the screws was bent. So I'll get a new one and uh, get a new screw. And I just refuse to pay seven or eight bucks for a gasket. So I'll make one. Yeah, just cut it out of some sixty thousandths uh, gasket material and I use a punch set here to cut the screw holes out. Usually do pretty good. Yamaha just has a quite the price for a lot of O-rings and gaskets, that sort of thing, and it's just ridiculous. So I just keep a little bit of gasket material on hand. Actually, I think that little cable tie goes right there. And we had one bent screw, so Stick a new one in there. Okay. Here we've got a spacer. around the counter shaft sprocket there. Just put a little oil on it. Just like that. And the neutral switch. And 
And I can go ahead and tighten up my detent now. Okay. What you do there to finish that part up is to uh, tighten up the sprocket nut and bend the tab over. Okay, I think we're done on this side for now, anyhow. Okay, we've got it back on the stand here, and I think this is as far as we can get with this video, but I'm gonna to try to get the, uh, re <clears throat> the remainder of this uh, assembled this weekend. So look for two videos if everything works out right. And, uh, then, of course, then we'll have to get into the boring of the cylinder and uh, tidy up the uh, magneto side. But uh, I think we can get her done, so look for another video after this one to get the lower end buttoned up. Okay, guys, there you have it. Uh, I think we're pretty much where we ought to be. So in the next video, I'll try to get that one up this weekend. Uh, we're gonna complete the lower end. Uh, should be able to do it. And uh, then of course we'll move on to the top end at some point. Not sure when that's gonna happen. We've got, uh, I've got some cylinders to bore. I've got the one for the 125. I've got the 360 Yamaha on the flat track machine. And I've got the Suzuki 250RM to, to bore also. So. I've got quite a few that I need to get to. I uh, think I got another one or two running around here for some local guys. Uh, but uh, that's where we're at right now. If you would, at this point, uh, if you've already subscribed, man, thank you very much. If you haven't, go ahead and do that and a thumbs up and hit the bell icon. And that way you'll get it. Uh, the next one I put up. Uh, as soon as it goes up. So uh, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.